There are some days and some places that simply stand above the rest. A racetrack perched along a cliffside in Australia. A cutting edge sport bike from the company that redefined the category. These are the ingredients for an unforgettable day and a once in a lifetime opportunity. Unfortunately, it's not actually me riding the GSXR 1000 at Phillip Island. Nope, today I'm just a spectator. As usual, Zach gets to have all the fun. Yeah, most days it's real good to be Ari Hemming, but today, today it's real good to be Zach. I mean, this bike at this track, whew, it's real good. That being said, there's a lot to talk about. I got a job to do after all. This is the first major update of the GSX-R1000 since 2009. So it's been a minute. For 2017, the big news is a variable valve timing system, not to mention ride-by-wire throttle, a full suite of electronic rider aids, as well as updated suspension and chassis components. In other words, the spec sheet has finally been brought up to speed for the current class of superbikes. Suzuki is hoping the new VVT system will set it apart from the competition. Its exclusive technology pulled directly from their GSX RR MotoGP race bike. In theory, it means great mid-range power and having a wicked top end rush without having to sacrifice one or the other. Below 10,000 RPM, the Gixxer's engine feels strong and mostly familiar. But beyond that, there's clearly something special happening. It's fast, really fast. It is unquestionably better than the old GSX-R1000. And in fact, it's the most capable GSX-R ever built. It's also the most expensive at $17,000 for this upspec R model. But even though it is faster and it is lighter, I'm just not sure it's fast enough or light enough to really set the class on fire. Superbikes are just that good these days. Luckily, for the purposes of making my Phillip Island dream come true and making Aerie horribly jealous, the bike was more than enough. Enough that I even started to feel bad. There had to be a way to get Aerie on a racetrack. Daytona! <laughs> Look at you, Harry Henning, driving around a racetrack in Australia with your old steering wheel and your force feed bag. I mean, it's You're realistic. Lucky guy. It's realistic enough that it's making me sweat. <laughs> yeah, it's, I forgot how much fun this game is. Video games are fun, and I appreciate you putting the coins in so that I could play, but this Thank is kind you. of a weak effort to make up for what you got to do yesterday. Oh, it's two bucks a game, weak <laughs> effort. Two bucks a game. Yeah, well, I'm uh, very happy that you got to ride the GSXR on such an incredible racetrack. But you know what, man? You don't sound happy. I'm not. I'm not happy. It's my <laughs> turn. I want to ride. I did not come all the way to Australia simply to pretend I've actually got a pretty sweet set of wheels lined up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering when you were going to bring that up. <laughs> is the Toyota Vienta VXI wagon. 1999, it's a fine vintage. It's got a three liter V6. And because I borrowed it off my buddy Laws, who happens to be a father, it comes with a car seat. It's got enough popcorn and cheesy poops in it to <laughs> keep us alive for a week if we break down. But what we're towing, right? Yeah. That's the real treat here. That's, yes. that's more airy handing speed, is it not? It is older and faster than the Vienta. It is an original first year pristine GSX-R 750. The great granddaddy of sport bikes. The original, the OG Gixxer. 1985. Yes, sir. Yeah. And where we are taking it is to the coast. They've got this thing called the Great Ocean Road. It's Australia's equivalent to the Pacific Coast Highway. It's supposed to be twisty. It is supposed to be scenic. It is supposed to be beautiful. It is supposed to be perfect for motorcycles. It is supposed to be a great road along the ocean. Correct. Great Ocean Road. Yeah, they're very direct here. I like it. Yeah, indeed. And 
Typically, we wouldn't tow a bike to a place, but hell no, this is an exception because yeah. we don't want to put miles on the vintage GSXR that's for sale. And the way I look at it is if we drive it in the trailer, that means the mileage we put on it on the ocean road can be that much more brutal and abusive. <laughs> Jesus. Right? Wheelies, burnouts. Cut, 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 cut. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 great. Uh, uh, ocean, r -r 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 road. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, so sick of driving. Vienta, she's a smooth roller, but man, I'm ready for But we're not drivers, we're riders. Great ocean road. Woo. Okay, it's unloading ride. Well, one of us anyway. All right, here we are, OG GSXR. Great ocean road stretching out before us. It's time for my once in a lifetime ride. It's Aries turn. You deserve it. I do. You do, Thank yes. you, and I'd appreciate it if you'd stick around, watch the Vienta because it is a loner. I don't want anything to happen to that precious vehicle. You're really funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy that it makes you happy. Yeah, yeah, I'm finally happy. I've been sitting around for a long time. No, I would never do this ride without you. Wouldn't be the same. Riding alone is not as fun. So, Thank you. With a little more help from another friend in Australia and a little bit of that movie magic, I got you this. Yes, and I appreciate that because when you said you made some calls, I genuinely thought it was gonna be a scooter. You know I wanted to get you a scooter. <laughs> I was trying to get a Bergman 400, but I figured you might enjoy that too much. I would have enjoyed it, but this is clearly the poetic choice, yes. is it not? Indeed so, it is. So, 1985 GSXR, and then 30 years later, the same model, a yeah. great road, yeah. a friend, full tanks of gas. I wanna ride, man, I haven't ridden yet. Yeah, I can tell you're kinda of chomping at the yeah. bit. You lead on, I'm right behind you. <laughs> Nothing calms the nerves quite like the therapy of a twisty road. And this road is truly one of the world's best. Tracing 151 miles of Australian coastline east of Melbourne, the Great Ocean Road passes by picturesque beaches, through villages, and along limestone cliffs. As usual, nothing this beautiful comes without sacrifice. In this case, it was the backbreaking labor by Australia's World War I soldiers returning from the battlefield. From 1919 to 1932, they constructed the road. Heavy equipment would have been nice, but these badasses chiseled through the terrain mostly by hand. Seriously, that's the work of real men. Our struggles on the Great Ocean Road were, admittedly, less serious. Is your bike throwing off a lot of heat? Uh, no. Like wafting around your knees and your wrists and your chest? I can <laughs> my wrists. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the big things they had to accomplish with this bike was getting rid of engine heat, and they're getting rid of it on me. <laughs> That's something that we probably take for granted, right? Ride around on motorcycles, and like, I'm barely getting any heat off this modern GSXR, and that's something that they've fixed over the years, that they've gotten really, really good at. It's a piece of refinement that we totally take for granted in the modern age, right? I think that's all just part of the experience of riding this thing. It's a throwback to an earlier time when bikes were running hotter and burning oil and tolerances were looser. I mean, the technology has marched so far forward and it's impressive in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways you're just like, holy crap, look how far we've come. Like the ergonomics, I'm sitting so deep in this motorcycle and reaching so far forward to the clip-ons, and it just feels long, slow to steer, and the brakes are remarkably bad. But you know what? I like old bikes, and this thing is historically significant. This is an important piece of sport bike history, and this is an awesome way to enjoy it. This is the first modern hypersport motorcycle. This is the first motorcycle to have a production aluminum frame, to have clip-ons, to have the full bodywork, and it made 100 horsepower, which seems like nothing these days, but like that was a serious benchmark to achieve in 1985. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing to think we ride these bikes back to back, and for me, nothing really shows how far out of date that bike is than riding this bike next to it, right? Like we said, identical bike, identical model just 30 years later. I mean, as cool as that bike is, it's clearly just objectively worse than this one. Yeah, I mean, it's old. What do you expect, you know? Yep. Kind of like you're 30 years old oh, and I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> I'm, this is enough for me. These corners are gentle. This road is beautiful. 
It's the perfect way to experience this motorcycle. Less than perfect for a rare and collectible machine rolling on 10-year-old tires were the massive raindrops that started to hit us a moment later. So, happy to have an excuse for lunch, we stopped in the next town for a quick break and a taste of local fare. Fun fact, you can actually park bikes on the sidewalk in the state of Victoria. At least, that's what we did. So this is like the Australian version of peanut butter? I love peanut butter. I know you love peanut butter. I don't think it's the Australian version of peanut butter. Well, only one way to find out, right? Here's the interesting thing about Benjamin. Oh boy. What is it? I took it easy with the mystery paste, but Aerie didn't care that it looked like axle grease. He was hungry, and he dove in knife first. Is this right? I mean, we don't know, dude. Foreign country, foreign customs. Cheers. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh! Oh! It's so salty. Oh. It's so salty. We didn't order anything to drink. I'm gonna get some water. Yeah, thank you. That'd be good. Seriously. Oh. Okay, no, we found one thing we don't like about Australia. We like the people, we like the roads. Like culture, Vegemite is a fail. Okay, let's find a cheeseburger. With our appetites fully ruined, lunch was shorter than usual. Even so, we weren't making great time. Turns out there was just too much to see. The Great Ocean Road is world famous as a tourist attraction, and we had been sucked right into the trap. There's supposed to be a koala tree around here somewhere, isn't there? Yeah, I guess they're just posted up, hanging out, doing their thing, chewing on vegetation. Doing that koala thing. I mean, we gotta do it. Yeah, I mean, if we see koalas, we gotta stop, agreed? Yes. Check it out! Hey! Oh, fuzzy koala bear creature in the tree. <laughs> I mean, I kind of thought there was gonna be more of them, but... Yeah, yeah, definitely that was the implication that we heard from people was like koalas everywhere. You know, you couldn't swing a dead cat in this forest without hitting a koala. He's looking at us. What's up, buddy? The road wandered from the coast, inland through eucalyptus forests and back again. And the distractions just kept coming. It seemed like every few kilometers, there was a reason to pull over, wander around, shoot photos, and of course, goof off. That's what road trips are for, and this was turning out to be a great one. Mm, that's where we had breakfast. Mm, we're right here, I'm assuming, because of the smudge marks. Yep, yep. Uh, we're like less than halfway. We should probably go like 100 miles an hour now. Turns out, when you don't stop every 10 minutes to see a dinosaur bug or a koala bear, you make pretty good time. And after dropping the hammer on our GSXR caravan and totally, definitely obeying every speed limit, it wasn't long until we were closing in on our final distraction. Hey, 12 apostles, two kilometers. Two kilometers, that's like, uh, it's like one point something miles. It's not very far. Special. Big Sur's got cliffs, but they don't have anything this vertical I mean, and this big. It's literally just. Yeah.
Here's the thing. This place is off the charts beautiful. And that may seem pretty obvious, but when you're there in person, it's really difficult to explain how spectacular it is. Even when you're sharing the view with a crowd of tourists and selfie sticks. Well, that's it, 12 apostles. I don't want any motorcycle ride to end, but I especially didn't want today's ride to end. Ugh. That was awesome. Oh my God. Really epic. So good. Yeah, it's sort of bittersweet, right? You don't want any motorcycle ride to end, like you say, but ending at a place like this, it's like, I don't know, I guess when it gets dark, I'll leave, but I'm not leaving until then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So overall, incredible trip. You got to ride Phillip Island on the 2017 GSX-R1000. Yes. I got to spend a day on this classic beauty here. <laughs> but. Talk to me a little more about the, the new Gixxer. I mean, that's the new stuff. Yes, I'm glad you asked. Because riding this vintage original GSX-R 750, it sort of made me realize and remember what a thunderbolt this was Absolutely. in the industry, right? It changed I mean, everything. Oh my God, it just changed like your perception, the whole motorcycling world's perception of what could be done when you wanted a performance machine. Yep. And for 2017, Suzuki has the variable valve timing and some neat technology that yeah. no one else has. but there's just no way to recreate what this bike yeah, did. Yeah, the know? times have changed. Kind of like Australia feels like yeah. a simpler time. <laughs> Compared the, to California, yeah. People are nice, there's not a whole lot of traffic. It's just like a great place to be as far yeah. as I can tell. Yeah, same here. Aside from the black flies. And that uh, crap we spread on the toast, and the Vegemite. The Vegemite, right. Stuff is nasty. Kind of don't understand why people don't just move here right away. Must be the distance. Yeah, speaking of distance, actually, yeah. We've got two bar motorcycles to return. We've got a long way back to Melbourne and a flight back to the US. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So until next time, Zach here, Ari there, tell your friends, subscribe, and we will catch you on the next episode of On Two Wheels. We could not wrap this episode up without first thanking our friend Laws Blaine. He is actually a journalist at New Atlas, reviews motorcycles himself. He was our fixer on the ground, and dude's just so patient. He's like an angel. Thank yeah. you. He was incredible. We really couldn't have done it without him. He probably deserves some kind of medal or something. Yeah, like knighthood or something. Yeah, I don't know if they do that in Australia, but they should. They, they should. should start with him. Yeah. If you need further proof of how great a guy Laws is, check out all this crap he had to put up with. And action! Oh, I f***ed us. Oh, you did. We f***ed us real hard. Did you say you suck at this? Yeah. Like you calling me. Like you wanting me. Like you wanting me. <laughs> like that's, no, no, that's too much. That's too much. So like take, well, let's just get all that shit off there. <laughs> See, that's the problem with Americans. You just try and go too big and too hard on everything. <laughs> this is a problem with you Australians. Yeah. There's no such thing as too much butter. There's, yeah. In our relationship, who would you say is the Vegemite and who would you say is the butter? Until next time, Zach here, Ari there. We will see you, but not next time, because I already said that. <laughs>